All right, good evening, everyone. I think uh, uh, it's just three of us for tonight, so we are going to get started. I will call the Board of Finance to order at 5.03 p.m. on September 19th. And first item on the agenda is the agenda. I'm working with Billy about the agenda. Great. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Uh, we're out. We're not out. Okay, let's take ourselves off. We are off mute, but I'm trying to make sure we have very good sound. So we can keep going. Sorry. Okay. Uh, great. We have adopted the agenda. The next item is the public forum. Is there any uh, anyone here in person who would like to speak to the board finance? Seeing none. Yes, Sharon. What? You'll go to mine. Go ahead, Sharon. Yes, hi, good evening. Um, I want to speak to item 4.01, which I'm going to shorten the title as Office of Workforce Development and Marketplace. Um, so this, this department, the expansion of the marketplace responsibilities for that director happened during COVID. Um, and, you know, I, I don't really feel that it perhaps got the attention of everyone. Everyone was so concerned about the virus and the focus of the the council and the administration was on the budget gap, staffing, and certainly the police issues. So um, I noticed this, but now that you're going to add positions, I, I want to make a couple of comments about this. Um, when I looked at the responsibilities listed in your uh, overarching memo, and thank you for that, um, there seemed to be some overlap with other departments like workforce development would normally fall in the HR function, um, business support um, is, was in CEDO, market marketing um, and programming for micro businesses was also in the past done by CEDO. Uh, BIPOC's business support, I can't speak to that, but um, you grew that the equity department, and I would have thought that some of that would have done, be done by those the staff there, although I'm not positive. Um, the reason I'm mentioning is this is that when the Office of Permitting expanded and <clears throat> integrated some planning positions, um, there was an extensive process that involved the director of planning, David White, and the proposed director of permitting, Bill Ward, and the HR department. And um, was there a process like that that happened during the COVID time? Um, was the CEDO director involved? Was the HR director involved? The marketplace director and the equity director involved in the creation of, of or the expansion of these responsibilities? Um, and I wanted to know also, has anyone redefined now what CEDO's mission is, since a lot of those functions were performed by the Community and Economic Development Office? Uh, I have another question for the administration and the council. It, will there be a commission overseeing this new department or expanded department? And you might say, why are you so focused on this? Well, I'm focused on this because Every time we expand and add positions, we add monies that we need to generate to fund those positions, those salaries, those benefits. They add to our retirement and the, and the public and the citizens pay for a portion of that. Although we've addressed most of that, we still pay for some. And I'm concerned about those funds and not in this year, you've, it, explain that in the FY23 budget, but I'm concerned about that in future years, what the financial impact will be. And I think that as a property owner in Burlington and a homeowner, you know, as we add positions and as we grow the city of Burlington's staff, that does impact our property taxes. And I believe, and it also impacts the rents. And I believe that this, I would like people to reflect on the fact that this 
does impact the affordability of housing in Burlington. And so as you move forward, I'm asking to understand the process. If that all happened, I'd very much appreciate having access to the information that occurred, that took place. And then answers to generally for everyone, not just for me, um, the new mission of CEDO and whether or not there'll be a commission overseeing this new expanded department. Thank you so much. Great, thank you, Sharon. And, um... You know, uh, this, again, is not a time where we really can get into excessive back and forth. Uh, I would just, uh, you know, since you, these are all fair questions and ones that may be on the minds of counselors, uh, just I will uh, say a few quick things on it. Um, one, uh, there is a commission that oversees the work of the department. It's the Church of Marketplace Commission. Uh, not everything that this department does is overseen there, but I would expand, expect that there would be expansion of that commission's oversight if uh, this plan that is articulated here is successful, which involves uh, not basically the, the expansions being paid for as proposed, not through uh, additional taxpayer payments, expanded revenues generated by, uh, by these activities and by um, expansion of uh, potentially of the uh, deep paying district. Of course, that'll be something that requires a lot of debate, work, and years from being implemented, but this is a multi-year plan uh, that is made out in this, in this effort. Um, uh, a couple other points. Yes, there's a lot of extensive discussion with other departments. Uh, for throughout this period, um, there was extensive discussion with the council about the creation of this department during the budget process. It's not done under the, you know, uh, there, was this, there was changes that were made in response to um, the circumstances that we faced in COVID. So I think it's accurate to say that these changes began um, uh, with uh, uh, Cara and her department playing an expanded role during the pandemic, but they uh, were debated and finalized uh, just in, in recent months, and um, I think there's been quite a bit of process uh, around uh, uh, comparable uh, in some ways to, to what you're raising. Reference. So those are some quick responses. I'm sure we'll get um, into more of it later. But now it's, I'm gonna, unless there's anyone else who wants to speak to the public, to the public finance online or in person, I'm going to close board of five. At 5 11, we got a pretty long agenda to get to. So let's uh, let's dive in. Um, as a result of the long agenda, um, we are doing something we don't always do at the Board of Finance, but we use this sparingly. Um, um, we did have some advanced communication on it here. We have created a consent agenda. Um, uh, is there is the board ready to move the consent agenda? Thank you. I'll make a motion to adopt the consent agenda and take the actions indicated. Thank you. Seconded by Councilor McGee. Discussion? Seeing none, we'll go to a vote. All those in favor of uh, the motion, please say aye. Aye. Um, uh, are there any opposed? Um, the motion carries unanimously. Um, so next up right away uh, is what we've just been talking about, uh, which is the, um, is the organization regarding the sustainable force and policy development department. Um, just uh, you have this, you know, right at the beginning because it is an important discussion item. I will try to stay mindful of the fact that we do have uh, a lengthy agenda behind it. Um, uh, you have until 6 30 to uh, get through the whole agenda however so we should have some time with that uh Cara, would you like to kick us off with some opening remarks yeah um thank you um first of all i i am excited um to uh discuss uh the work that the Office of Business and Workforce Development has been doing. Um, I see Lynn Reagan's here joining us. She is um, my HR manager. Um, and some of the topics I wanted to hit on are ones that um, former Councillor Busher had also brought up. So I'm happy to dive into those as well. Um, I am suggesting adding um, 
four positions, which you can see on my PowerPoint presentation. I don't know. Or, sure. Sorry. Um, most of these positions are to be in a support function um, to uh, members of what I would consider my management team right now. Um, and it allows them to focus more on policy um, because we do a lot of technical support for businesses. Um, so what uh, the Office of Business and Workforce Development does encompass the Church Street Marketplace, which has a separate budget per charter. It's held separately. And then it also um, encompasses the business support that we provide citywide, um, the management of the Early Learning Initiative, um, as well as uh, continuing the work we've been doing in workforce development. So we did start a program um, through our connections in the Early Learning Initiative, we started a program for um, teacher training um, in the childcare industry and social and emotional training. Um, and uh, we're hoping to launch our second round of that right now. Um, and in the Early Learning Initiative, we've added six new centers um, to help support getting workers back to the workforce. Um, so a lot of what we're um, offering is we're attacking uh, business support and business development, both from the consumer driven side, as well as from the workforce side. Um, in terms of consumer driven side, we, uh, we run the summer market, the winter market, the one world market. Um, we have set up, um, for example, this summer, the first time we have, we used um, some federal funds to offer grants um, to BIPOC and minority vendors in the park uh, so that they could, we could help them cover the fees. This allows these home-based micro businesses to access a customer base that they wouldn't normally have access to. Um, also through the Church Street Marketplace arm, we are um, supporting the businesses that are more established that we know on the street. Um, we run the Micro Business Alliance. Um, we are about to launch a revolving loan fund, a $500,000 loan fund targeted to BIPOC and women-owned businesses. Um, um, we offer extensive uh, training and support. Um, one of my best examples as for the need for the, um, the added capacity is Will Clavel works in my department. He has a great policy mind and he spends a lot of time uh, at offering technical support and helping small business owners fill out forms to get grants and loans. And we're trying to ease, uh, give him more capacity to work on policy by having um, someone who reports to him that can help work more hand in hand with the businesses. Um, in addition, um, council did task the city with offering some um, additional support for social equity applicants who are opening uh, cannabis businesses. And that will run through my office as well, as well as helping them get the support that has already been established through the state. Um, so we just wrapped up granting $100,000 in a reopening and expansion grants, and 90% of those recipients were BIPOC. Um, and in answer to Sharon Busher's comment, uh, we do work closely with REIB so they can advise us on how to best target uh, the money that we're trying to get out there and how best to support those businesses, and we also rely on the TCBs to help us with that communication. Um, but the work itself on the ground is executed by the business support team. Um, TCB, of course, is the Trusted Community Voices Program. Correct. Correct. Uh, All right, I think that's, I think that's, that's yeah. good. Why don't we uh, I'm sorry if I and then could also yeah. to what the mayor had mentioned is. Um, the mayor did have me do a four-year revenue projection, a budget projection, so that I could, um, we, ARPA funding is funding some of this, um, but we know that that will be ending. And so I can relieve my pressure on the general fund as well as relieving my pressure on ARPA. Um, and we have identified uh, multiple sources of income, uh, including these markets, 
um, more people supporting um, corporate support for Love Burlington and the work we do there, where, as you know, we separate, we have lists of BIPOC-owned businesses and women-owned businesses, and every small locally-owned business in Burlington is listed on that website, and getting more sponsorship for those, and as well as what um, the mayor referred to as in the future, it, using the DID, the Downtown Improvement District, as a mechanism to help fund these um, enhanced services that we're offering with businesses. Great, when we pause there and uh, open up the floor for questions, just one in our sort of shared, trying to keep us on track on time, I do want to just note that the last 10 or 15 minutes of the meeting uh, is planned for discussion of Memorial Auditorium, which uh, so, um, so with that, the floor is open. Are there questions, uh, questions or comments uh, for Carl? I just have a go ahead for some Paul. Uh, thanks. So um, let's see here. Maybe I missed it. Um, I have the. Is there you had mentioned that you did uh you haven't get all the way through this you did you mention that you did a four-year projection did you did you give that to us i did not oh, give that okay. to you because not all of these revenue sources are locked in okay these are projected revenue sources so we use that as an internal document all right so that's just a, sort of an exercise to be able to say in four years from now without arpa that will not be okay all right, that's um, right. Yeah, next. I, um, I, I, I can. It was something that's quite important to me before bringing this forward. I didn't um, totally realize you had not summarized that in some way here. Um, so I apologize for that. Uh, the, um, I, I'm sad. You know, to me, it, it requires like a job of developing a strategy that would actually, um, as ARPA expires, Really, um, uh, fully fund this department, and, or we are fund this department with, uh, with no draw on them, uh, a very limited draw on the general fund. And, um, you know, I think this is an area where, um, certainly, you know, as Carter said, there are numerous areas that are not guaranteed, and we'll go we'll into a lot of work to make good on that. It will be, um, in the uh, cities within you know our kind of joint abilities to cut back on um areas of this department if we are uh, i think this is an area where traditionally there's long there's been a, kind of an allergy to spending uh, too much general fund support on economic development we have a plan that's consistent with that and if um ash thinks very realistic and achievable plan if it uh, does not um, fully succeed however we'll have the ability to Start back areas that we don't have. I mean, we can understand. I mean, like, you know, when you when you mentioned that, when you mentioned mentioned pro forma, it's sort of hard for me not to not to ask the question of Understood. where's the pro forma. Yeah. Um, but uh, given the fact that we're voting on the reorg plan, and I don't recall ever voting on a reorg plan with having a four year pro forma mm -hmm. before, um, then. I'll, I'll, I'll trust that that will be something that we discuss as time goes by. Thanks. I appreciate that. Any further, further discussion or are we ready for a motion? Uh, sure. I'm... Go ahead, Preston. Uh, I'm happy to uh, recommend that the council approve the attached resolution. Okay. So I guess I have our discussion. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Aye. Are you opposed? Motion carries unanimously. And uh, thank you, Brad. Um, <clears throat> 4.02 is the delegation of authority for budget neutral amendments within city departments, uh, individual budgets. Um, I think Catherine is the best position to speak to this, something that she's worked on. And uh, we're just going to read. Significant amount of uh, bureaucratic work for our permanent um, Yes. Yeah, so, um, thanks to some collaboration um, with Brendan and Paul and um, Councilors 
um, McGee, as well as Bergman. We've had a lot of good input on this process. Um, and the idea is that once the budget is passed on June 30th, as it stands now, any change, um, even a budget neutral change within the same department for $1 uh, creates a lot of work for department heads and myself, and that's unnecessary. Um, so we have looked at the um, budget neutral amendment um, process as was outlined in 2014 that relieved some of that pressure and we have updated it so that um, if it's under a thousand dollars, that's not something that needs to be addressed until the end of the fiscal year or um, it reaches a thousand dollars. Department heads will have authority up to ten thousand dollars and that um, will actually free up quite a bit of internal resources. One of the other things that we brought back is a quarterly report back to this body about what budget amendments are happening um, so that there is some more accountability from one budget year to the next about how the city is spending the money that's been allocated. Any questions? <clears throat> There's a question that maybe I'd be glad to move that we that the city council to Thank you. Second. Thank you, Councilor. Right there, our discussion. No, we the vote. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed? She carries unanimously. Thank you, Captain, for your work on that. Um, 4.03, and, and thank you to the counselors that, uh, that, that worked to uh, resolve some initial questions on this to get this done. Um, it's appreciated. 4.03 uh, proposed budget amendment for the Fletcher Free Library match towards the National Endowment for the Humanities Infrastructure and Capacity Building Challenge. Grants for capital projects. <clears throat> um, see, uh, Mary Danko is with us. And Mary, would you like to say a few quick words to kick us off here? Um, actually, um, Mr. Mayor, I was going to kick it over to Nicole. We've been working with her hard on this, and she's a little bit more knowledgeable of this particular grant. Okay. This might be the first time uh, Nicole, Nicole has presented the Board of Finance. Over the years, many, many times, uh, you, I'm sure, remember her great work as a uh, transportation planner in PW. In recent months, she has joined the clerk treasurer's team as one of the two employees that we have pursuing federal dollars and state dollars in this suddenly renewed period of uh, there being um, funding available for municipalities. And uh, it, it's really exciting the work she's doing in that role. It's one of the first chances to. Uh, talk about one of these opportunities. Uh, so go ahead, Nicole. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, this is an exciting new position and happy to bring forward a potential project with the library tonight. Um, we are packaging an application through the National Endowment for Humanities. It is a capital challenge infrastructure grant. Um, Mary and her team have identified over $2 million in repair needs, uh, mostly in the exterior of the building. We're trying to leverage some funding that is likely going to be approved as a federal earmark in December through Senator Leahy. And that grant would be for 500000 And so we're trying to leverage that bit of money by pursuing this additional grant through the National Endowment for Humanities. We presented this request to the city's capital committee about two weeks ago. Um, they did unanimously approve the request. Uh, this is using bond premiums, which would fund the local match of, I gotta pull up my notes here. It was approximately a little more than $700,000. Uh, endowment grants um, through this program are a little unusual. Typically we would not be coming to Board of Finance and Council at this stage in the process, but they do require that if we're using city funding for the match that it basically be in uh, our equivalent of legislative language approving the project and 
basically assigning the local match for this grant. So that is why we're here tonight to show that the city is confirming the local match commitment that this is not an operational budget. <clears throat> And um, yeah, as I said, we're hoping that we can use this to leverage uh, additional repairs for the exterior of the building. This is really deferred maintenance to make sure that the library can continue operating and doing all the great work that they're doing. Mary, anything to add? No, just very grateful for um, all the support. I, this was a quick one. It was a quick turnaround and um, uh, the Capitol Committee and Nicole and Ashley Parker have been really working hard on this. So grateful for all their support. And we don't know if we're going to get it. This is the hard thing, but we've you know got our fingers and toes crossed. Great. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you both. Uh, the floor is open for questions, comments, motion. Just, right a, just a quick question. Um, it's also funny because I feel like we just talked about this in the in the budget presentations. Uh, so it's nice to see something uh, potential come up this quickly um, after the budget was passed. But I just had a question on, I didn't completely understand one of the sentences, which I'm now looking for. Oh, in the on the overview second paragraph, the second sentence of the second paragraph. It basically says the library facility staff have identified one million projects that should be advanced and will not impact the future renovations and vision for the library. Can you just walk me through what that means? Yeah, um, Mary can probably add more detail about the future vision of the library, but there is a larger uh, planned project to upgrade the library. It would relocate the entrance um, at a plaza. And so this project is, is again, like deferred maintenance that does need to be done and wouldn't have to be undone or redone with the project. But Mary, maybe you can talk about that work a little bit. Yeah, no, I think that's the best way to put it. As we're looking at, um, as the mayor kind of alluded to, there's we are still seeing these monies come down and we're always trying to look at them and see what's the best way we can use them, but also keeping in a line with our larger vision for what we wanna do. And this does that. I see. So we're saying there's $2 million in maintenance, which does not mean any of the future hopes and dreams. Got it. Thank you. Um, with that, I'm happy to make a motion to take the recommended action as listed on board docs. Great, thank you, Councilor Hightower. Second by Councilor McGee. Any discussion? Seeing no further discussion, I'll go to a vote. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries unanimously. Um, thank you. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, that brings us to 4.04 which is the authorization to execute the contract for the management and the operation of the Elmore Emergency Shelter Community. Um, this is approval for much discussed Shipley Housing uh, Trust uh, contract, obviously something that a lot of people put a lot of effort and to get into this point and a very good news for the project that we're here. Uh, Sarah Russell is here as well as uh, Samantha Dunn, uh, questions. About the project or this contract. Uh, Sarah, do you want to say anything else? I think so. All right. It's a great. Time coming. <laughs> Good. Agreed. Uh, floor's open. That's Ricky. Um, thank you, Sarah. This is really exciting. Thank you, Samantha. And everyone else at CEDO has put in so much time to uh, get us to this crucial point tonight and um, I'm just curious if you all have any sort of updates on timeline right now or if we're still sort of tracking what we were expecting. Um, and I think Samantha could probably take the timeline in terms of construction. We were originally we're aiming for November 1st, but now we're like early in November. Um, I'm thankful for every second of that because we have a lot of work to do to, to stand up this project in terms of developing policies and procedures specific to um, some of the pieces of the management um, contract. So 
Um, do you have any other? Yeah, I think, I think we are still waiting um, a ship date on our last pieces, which will be the um, bathhouse and the community space that are really necessary to complete the site. Um, we uh, luckily got, we've been given a, a special slot in October, given the urgency, but um, we, it's just, I, I think we're not going to know until we know um, <laughs> exactly when they're coming, we'll be ready for them when we when they come and we anticipate that will be in the first half of November. They need to have, be fully installed um, and make sure CHG has had comfort with the site as complete to get ready to operate. Sure. Appreciate all the effort that will continue to go into this project <laughs> uh, and then in the weeks and we look forward to collaborating with you all. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. To that point, Customer Media, I just do want to point out you're absolutely right to thank the two of these individuals and the CEDO team for this work. Uh, it should be clear that there is, uh, this is really almost, there are numerous other departments that have been involved in getting to this as well. Certainly, uh, Public Works had to do a lot of the work in making the parking lot uh, available, working with the commission to get them to be supportive and then making some commitments around the work. It needs to be done here at the police department, uh, both Chief Murad and Lucy Ann Smith uh, were, have been quite involved in specifically in addressing uh, how some of the operational questions and how the police uh, are going to be supportive uh, of CHT. Those are some of the final uh, hurdles that we need to get over. My office has certainly, I've personally been very, very involved in, in uh, some of the final negotiations um, as that even agencies in the state. So I just want to make sure the council is clear. Um, this has really been a big team effort uh, with many people involved to get us to this place. Thanks to everyone involved. Great. Uh, uh, President Paul. Thank you. Um, so, uh, I guess the only question that I have is uh, you know, of course, we're all excited about this uh, getting on the ground. It does put again certain amount of stress on uh, strain on someone or some ones uh, to find additional funding sources. Is this, you know, the contract is only for one year. Um, it would have been wonderful to have had like a three-year contract with CHT, but uh, uh, certainly understandable why we only have one year. Um, but um, that is my, or even a two-year contract. But that's just my concern is, you know, we, we took, um, uh, you know, we we have we got the award. The question is, how easy, you know? Yes. How easy is it going to be? Do this, be able to do this in year two? Yep. The um, this is a big question that we uh, are, have been working on and are going to continue to work on. Um, in a worst case scenario, we do have more offer funds that we can and will dip into to sustain operations for the three years. So that's fine. That said. Uh, I don't think it should be just this, the city uh, filling that gap. Um, we are hopeful that um, we may be able to, we, we think it, there needs to be at least this additional coverage. State has already come up with significant funds for this airport at $600,000 a year. It is quite a bargain for the state at $600,000 a year. Um, uh, the, uh, the, um, Cost per night, uh, per bed, works out to something in the neighborhood of $124, $125 a bed, which is very comparable or even less than a lot of the other emergency shelter funding that the state provides. And the quality of what is being offered here, the level of service, um, uh, it really goes way beyond uh, what is generally uh, maybe what is available anywhere else for that $124 a night. So, um, we're, we're engaged in conversation with the state about further support. It's, um, there are other entities as well that, uh, may be able to contribute here. So this is a starting place and we have the fallback plans. We don't do better at this, but our intention is to do better at this. Okay. And I'm personally committed to that as well, but it's something, uh, my is so tracking and you know, going to attempt to do a little more there. Um, I don't know if I uh, don't know if a uh, motion has been made. I'm mean, I'm happy to make the motion to take the action as recommended. I don't know. Thank Someone you. make a motion. Thank Thank you. Motion. Thank you, Thank you. Person Paul. Seconded by Councilor McKee. Further discussion. 
We will all be. Go to a vote. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Uh, thank you. I uh, appreciate the council's uh, unanimous support on this project uh, since the beginning. And it is uh, exciting that we're going uh, to close to finally uh, bring it. Finally, it's not the, <laughs> the, the conception of the last December. I don't know that there's, it's really hard to think of a comparable project that has come past on anything like that timeline. And, uh, and let's get Smith and Sarah sort of what I give credit for, for that. Um, and uh, so at the same time, um, we, we have been talking about this in recent months. It's great to see it happen. <laughs> Okay, uh, 4.06 is um, a reclassification of two of the positions in the in the mayor's office. You uh, must clarify. Uh, uh, nice. really quick. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. <laughs> um, right. So, sorry, 4.05. Uh, i say a couple things just to keep this up. Sure. This is uh, authorization to accept money <laughs> to go towards the Elmwood Shelter community. Um, so this is two different sources of funding. One is a $50,000 grant from the Vermont Low Income Trust for Electricity, um, specifically to put solar panels on these two community buildings that um, will be coming to the site. That means that those buildings um, will be able to operate net zero on their own. Um, and hopefully kick off you know, even more energy that will be applied sort of to the energy needs by the shelters. Um, and the second piece is a very important $75,000 of additional incentives from Burlington Electric Department to help us um, install high performance mechanical equipment, make sure there's no fossil fuels on this site, add additional insulation, just um, meets generally our city's uh, energy goals, um, in, even in this temporary facility. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Floor is open. Councilor McGee. I'm happy to uh, make a motion to take the action recommended by the board of Second. Thank you both for the discussion. Seeing that, we'll go to a vote. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 All right. Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Okay, now we're at 4.06, which is the uh, reclassification of two mayor's office positions. Uh, spend a moment laying out why this is uh, some kind of a question we would have the council support for and speak through the questions. Help for it to do a short summary. Sure. Okay. That goes across. So, um, two positions uh, that we're talking about here are um, uh, the mayoral uh, communications coordinator and the chief staff position. And the reason for the request is uh, different in, in each case. The communications uh, position is one that um, <clears throat> has uh, responsibilities of it um, have grown to uh, include um, citywide communications and coordination um, uh, with um, uh, you know, across across the city, across departments, and significant leadership there. Um, this is also something we have, a position that we have um, uh, at various times uh, in, uh, Advertised for and uh, struggled to for a sense of extended period of time, extended periods of time to get qualified candidates for. Um, and uh, I think it's really, uh, it's really important for this, the mayor's office being able to effectively do its work. But I, I also think, uh, you know, really given the role of the mayor's office plays um, uh, with uh, the management of the city and, and Engagement with the council having really strong person in this uh, position is, is, is critical. The chief of staff position, this is really um, addressing, uh, and now it's time to do it at a time when you know, there is support for reclassifying the, 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 the,
project coordinator position. We, um, this position used to be, at one point, this position was a grade 28 position. And then uh, Mike Tanner left the position. Um, and um, I thought Brian Lowe was great. Position. We downgraded it so uh, that he threatened to be qualified. Um, sometimes we, this is not unique to, to the mayor's office. This is something that happens uh, citywide at times um, when um, we uh, you know, sometimes we need to do uh, regrading in order to um, for the person that we're hoping to assign them to, to be uh, appointed or get the job. That's what happened with uh, Brian Lowe um, with council support. And, um, 2015 and then in 2018 we did that again um when i believe jordan that was the right uh, person for the job she would not qualify under the just she, she had minimum qualifications to meet the the uh 25 requirements was ground downgraded to 22. uh she now has been in the position for years that there were uh, responsibilities were taken out of the position to, uh, was years of experience to uh uh, so to, for that uh, downgrade to be possible, she's now been in the position for four years. She has effectively um, been doing many of the duties that I would think should be re, uh, back in uh, to the position for some time. Uh, she certainly she now has the qualifications for the grade 25. And, uh, I think it's, it's right for a matter of uh, kind of fairness uh, with this specific employee, but also I think uh, for the future, of this position, I think it should be a more senior um, position. And, uh, future, whether future openings or future mayors seeking those positions, I think will be well served uh, by having this back at the grade 25 level. So it's really just a reversal of that chance to me. Um, there is some additional cost uh, if, uh, that we have a lay out a plan for. Um, like addressing uh, in the current budget year. President Paul. Um, I'm happy to uh, make the motion and uh, the secretary on board docs. Thank you. Is there a second for the motion? That's a good Thank you. Second to further discussion. Go to, go to a vote. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Carries down. Appreciate the board for uh, four point oh seven creation of a new um, conservation field corner coordinator position within Parks Recreation and Waterfront Department. Uh, this is a position. Council former Councilor Butcher is listening. I know she's. Uh, uh, you know, fair question, where, where is this any new position being created from? Um, there are expanded revenues within uh, the um, post -bike, bike path maintenance uh, revenue uh, tax, as well as the, um, uh, the conservation fund um, that uh, make it possible to fund this position without a general impact. And uh, Cindy is here remotely. Uh, would you like to say anything else about, about this, Cindy? Sorry, no, I don't know. Launched in, took your <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. No, we're excited about moving this position forward. Um, we do a lot of projects with our conservation team. Dan does a fantastic job pulling in volunteers from a variety of places, whether they're businesses or UVM. And this position will help us with managing many of those projects, but also um, allow us to do some work on our natural surface trails, which um, need a lot of work in this community, and also some winter trails. So we look forward to more focus on cross-country skiing and fat biking on the trails in Burlington to allow folks uh, the opportunity to get outdoors. Great. Thank you, Cindy. Floor is open for questions, motion. I'm happy to make the motion. Um, uh, his rec make the motion as recommended on the uh, board docs. Great. Is there a second? Second by Councilor Hightower. Discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Aye. Are any opposed? 
of carries unanimously. Um, thank you. Yes, thank you, Cindy. Okay, 4.08 is uh, uh, police recruitment and hiring coordinator. Uh, uh, Karen is uh, not with us tonight, but Catherine has been working with her on this position. Um, and uh, it's no about their questions about it. Um, this is a position I will just uh, remind folks we debated and created this position in the budget process. Um, what this is now is the approval of the, the job description. So actually go from that sort of conceptual approval to actually getting this position posted and, and filled. Um, uh, their, uh, President Paul worked hard uh, last week to um, make sure that the police commission had the opportunity for some input to use the job description as well. Um, and uh, I appreciate that because I think there's real urgency around the creation of this I think so. Um, also want to want to mention that uh, it was actually uh, the encouragement of Councillor McGee to to make sure that this this position had been had been reviewed and that the and allowed a collaborative effort with the police commission, which I believe very 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 much took place, and I did have a chance um, uh, when the uh, HR director. Uh, Durfee wasn't busy planning her wedding, uh, was had a few minutes to talk about this, and it sounds like uh, we're in a good place to move this forward. Um, with that, um, I would make a motion to, uh, um, to take the actions recommended on board docs. Thank you. Second by Councilor McGee. Discussion? Thank you. Go ahead, Councilor McGee. I just wanted to offer my own thanks for uh, the extra time that folks took to get the engagement from the police commission and I just hope that we can build that into the process going forward um, for any more of these discussions so that we can not have to have these delays um, in the council process. Thank you, Council Reed. Um, quite a take it. Um, that there's no further discussion. We'll go to a vote. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Aye. Are there any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. And um, uh, thank you. Um, uh, it's an important, uh, important, important recommendation uh, for, for the department. 4.09 is the Queen City uh, Park Road. Side path, uh, trans grant acceptance. Welcome. Are we engineering team? Um, okay, yeah, great. Sorry, thank you, Catherine. So, um, in the interest of time, if there if there is interest, the next maybe. Laura, could you speak to we're thinking, talking about moving 4.09, 4.11, together? Uh, perhaps you could give a, a quick summary. To, I'm actually going to let Philip, one of our works engineers, yeah, sure. uh, take that. He's actually a project manager at all three. Great. Well, so, well, so there are, there are three different VTrans grants. Green City Park Road is a large scale VTrans bike bed grant, which will support the city council preferred alternative. Um, so that will be design and construction for Queen City Park Road and then Birchcliffe Parkway. That's a small scale VTrans bike bed grant. Uh, that's already part of the CY22 street reconstruction program. So this is going to be in support of the traffic homing project on Birchcliffe. And then Pearl Street is a VTrans town highway grant. And that's to support uh, street reconstruction efforts managed. These are all reimbursement grants. So the city will have to use funds to. <laughs> Great. Thank you for that summary. Um, floor is open for our the board would like to uh, bring up my second one to you guys. President Paul. Um, I'm, I'm always happy to make a motion to accept money. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, would be happy just in the interest of time and expediency to make a motion on all three to take the recommended action as or the action is recommended at board docs. If that's okay. Thank you. Um, 
Thank second. you. Second by Councilor Hightower. Our uh, discussion or question was. No further questions, we will go to a vote. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you both. I think yep. we'll know it's all been a much better job at this than as my partner. <laughs> yeah, we built this picnic where I was. I think you got a single point in our question. Oh, like, that you had one? <laughs> Two of us. Who's the greater than this? DPW uh, annual employee picnic last week, uh, where it was a, a little cornhole uh, effort, which uh, was not set up to regulation. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> for a rematch. Wow. <laughs> Although I'm sure even if it was regulation, Corey would have, would have crushed us. <laughs> so uh, with that, uh, 4.12, Burlington High School, outdoor classroom and roof garden downtown garage setting yes full, full project so yeah we're with another you introduce uh, yeah it's another exciting project we're collaborating with the high school since joe hey tech who's works with uh vhs um for a while to come up, come up with a way to put a garden outdoor learning space on top of what we're now calling the downtown north garage with the new garage you know it by that name um so what we're here tonight to request is a little funny so i do want to explain it quickly so we're here to one notify you that we're doing this because on wednesday we're going to decommission spaces so they're not any parking spaces we're going to decommission spaces and then the part of the, so that's part of our motion tonight. The other part is to authorize mayor to enter a lease with the school after we go through the whole first commission on Wednesday. So we're trying to <laughs> save a step on this here. So it's a little confusing, but basically we need to go to the first commission. But once we do commission, the authority, the responsibility of that area, space, like you, so the mayor has the authority to do this step with you. That's what we're asking for tonight. Um, so, any questions? Uh, let's see. Thank you for that summary. Um, the floor is open for what are we going to use my space for? So, they're going, it's literally rooms up garden with planters, a couple sheds, mostly planting. You need to speak to those, mostly planters built out of the railroad type. Um, some of those, and then there are raised bed plants, um, but we also have, uh, we want to be able to have an outdoor space. As you know, we're in kind of a large windowless um, <laughs> space with no, with no like outdoor space. Didn't know that. <laughs> oh, yeah. um, so we would have an outdoor space where we could do, uh, we could have like, uh, outdoor classroom spaces, but also some recreational spaces for lunch. And then, um, you know, hopefully being able to run certain programs uh, with um, some community partners on like sustainable farming, um, growing vegetables in the one, in the beds that are approved for edible things, the ones that are not made out of old Right, uh, old guard rooms. <laughs> um, so we did our research upon these, and then also just having like a nice decorative space where we can go outside and enjoy it. And 11 spaces big enough for outdoor classrooms. It's 11 spaces plus, I think it was 17 additional feet in the quarter. Um, the way we sectioned it out, we could we could sort of divide it into two spaces, into two like classroom spaces that um, teachers and classes would sign out and go up to use. And during recreational times, it would be under um, supervision, just like our cafeteria and other kind of public rec areas in our building. We have a pretty extensive operations plan that we've worked on for months now to make sure that we understand just what's happening in that space. So we are, we'll be the lane that says the scene. <laughs> well, unless there's other questions, I'm happy to the uh, recommended action on that. Thank you. Second, second by President Paul. Discussion. Uh, can you just make the point, uh, Jeff? Send a memo that you're not expecting the uh, impact. Of, uh, 
Yes, we still have that fully recovered on revenues. Um, so the lease that we've not signed we will have a clause in it that says if you want to park the driver's full, we'll be in for occupancy capacity. Um, then we'll terminate. It's a three year lease setting just so we have a solid timeline. But if the garage gets used, we'll be able to play it. Right now, one of the Parks up there, one of our English teachers. <laughs> he likes the view. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Uh, if there's no further questions or comments, we'll go to a vote. All those. Maybe I'm much better. Yes. Uh, sure. <laughs> Did you just want to say something? No. Okay. Uh, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Very unanimous. Thank you both. Although it's good to know, I feel like people are starting to write me again to complain about parking downtown. So I think we'll be able to point them to an empty garage. Yeah. <laughs> Even Christmas holidays, almost always uh, quite a few spaces available in those garages. I have not just just recent, the town's just recent, but the store, but the so. That's a good message to get out there. <laughs> and it's been doubted, but verified by new screws. It's, uh, it's, really, a, it's really a thing. Um, <laughs> work assignment agreement number eight with utility services company, one of the first of, of a cell antenna corral, redstone tank, and related budget amendments. That's the water resources item. And Megan here to speak to it. You want to? You got time, Megan, to give us a your summary. Yeah, sure. Um, if uh, those of you who are familiar with our smaller tank that's on the Redstone campus, the Redstone tank, uh, I affectionately call it Sputnik because it's got lots and lots of antennas uh, on it that have been in place since 1990s. Um, but they're directly mounted to the tank, which is not good for the tank and makes it pretty much impossible for us to do maintenance in the future. Um, you all, uh, the past couple of years, have um, approved us um, to engage utility services company. Uh, they helped us rehab, uh, re rehabilitate the larger tank, which hopefully everybody's happy with how that came out. She looks bright, bright and shiny and new. And we're trying to do the rehabilitation on the redstone tank. And as part of that, we need to remove all of the antenna. Um, rather than just putting them back and drilling them right back onto the tank, uh, we're trying to plan for the future, and by putting this corral in, uh, that'll enable us to remount the antenna and in the future not have to take them off and do temporary cell towers and all the stuff that we are currently going through. Uh, the amount of revenue that we get from the cell leases is not insubstantial. It's about $98,000 a year. It escalates at 6%. And other than the many efforts we're having to go through right now in order to do the rehab because there is not a corral it's relatively low effort for the revenue. They sit up there, we get paid, um, and you know that helps keep uh, some of the costs lower for the ratepayers, uh, which is why we think that it is um, advisable to go ahead and spend this amount of money to invest in having a structure that antennas can be mounted to in the future. Great, thank you, Megan. Sounds like a great idea. Um, floor's open for questions or motion. That's right there. I'm happy to move the corrective action at this time. Excellent. Second by Council McGee. Uh, okay, let's see if there's no comments or questions, we'll go to a vote. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. And it brings us to another water resources item: <laughs> the creation of a wastewater plant operator assistant position. Doesn't fall. Thanks. So I'll make the uh, uh, motion to recommend the council to the action is recommended on board votes. Thank you. Is there a second? Second by Councilor McGee. Discussion? Questions? Being here, Tony, as well. Um, with no questions or comments, we'll go to a vote. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you for your support. Thank you.
Okay, uh, final action item, and then we will have the memorial discussion. The final action item is uh, Board of Finance approval only, um, because this is for a financial transaction under $100,000, which is our previous board. Um, and uh, Megan Tello, our um, planning director, who's been uh, leading the effort to um, bring this forward uh, this year, might, might kick this off, uh, Megan. Okay, sounds good. Um, so this is a request to authorize uh, me to sign a contract with a firm called Urban Free, which is a firm of planners and data analysts who perform uh, pretty unique evaluations around uh, property values, essentially, for a whole variety of purposes, um, ranging from you know informing the public about choices about investment and public services to the impact, uh, financial impacts of public policy. Um, and even you know, data that can provide a platform for discussion about taxation policy. Um, so the specific proposal that we have received is um, an analysis that includes a number of different um, ways of looking at the city's property and taxation value, um, including helping us see more information about tax values on a per acre basis and how that varies across different parts of the city. Um, looking at uh, not only the value, the property value, but actually how much different properties pay in taxes in real dollars and helping us visualize that by different parts of the city um, to really help us understand kind of the, um, I guess, fairness across the city of different um, types of value. Uh, it also looks at um, helping us evaluate the impact of public policy decisions. So um, specifically, the proposal includes um, looking at a couple of different um, policy changes in terms of land use to help us evaluate what the potential future value of and, and tax revenue earned by the city could be from changes to uh, land use policy. And as you know, there are a number of really high profile um, housing policies that our, our team is looking at with the Planning Commission and ultimately with you. Um, and then uh, another piece of this is to look at uh, available data about the history of discriminatory housing policies and discriminatory land use and taxation policies to understand uh, the long-term economic impact on property values and in different neighborhood fiscal health as a result of those policies. Um, so it's a pretty wide ranging study. Um, our office is managing this as a data project, but uh, we really see that the information that will result from this project will help inform a number of departments ongoing work and a number of initiatives that um, other council committees are considering as well. Great, thank you. That's right there. Um, I had a lot of comments and I'll keep them to myself because I know we're trying to um, limit this, but I guess I am. So the only comment that I'll say is kind of overarching, which is, um, I guess, to, I'm curious to what extent this is looking at. Historically, we think of single family homes, like we maybe have more than in our ends of large yards as the lowest per square foot of acres of land. Um, property taxes, right? Because you're only paying for that, whereas in multi-unit buildings and everything commercial space like you might have downtown per square foot is a lot higher. So like per road, it pays for the more. Is that the kind of thing that they'll be looking at? That is part of what they look at. So they do um specifically try to look at the linkage between um not only the property's value, but the value by acre. So kind of normalizing it for size. I believe I've also seen some of their work try to normalize value per unit. Um, and then, you know, their work has evolved a little bit over the years that they've been in this um, line of analysis. But one of the original things that they actually did was help communities understand how much different land uses pay for their share of public infrastructure, essentially. Um, that's great. And I think you answered the question, but I guess to what extent is this going to be helpful in terms of timing and is John involved with using this information? And maybe you know the answer to that more than, um, but I'm curious about how this could be used for an expert assessment and what we're thinking for that, or if it's just background information that we may or may not use. 
No, but the whole the reason we're excited to be on this is I, I've seen, I think these guys are great. I, I've seen them they, uh, they presented here in Burlington before. I've seen them uh, at the national conferences. Um, they, um, uh, we've seen some examples of their work in other cities that has really you know, made some uh, pretty fundamental uh, questions about um, the methodology and the, the um, equitability of the way in which those cities are, are, are doing taxation. And um, uh, yeah, absolutely, this is not meant to be some kind of academic background. Uh, the idea is that this, um, uh, you know, coming out of this, you know, challenge for your appraisal period and it's time to have to look at the system and its fairness and whether um, there is more that we should be doing to create a better system. And, um, how effective this firm is. Uh, I don't know, hopefully, you know, some actual items. Uh, and so we can work on the other items. And I think, as Megan said, I think this committee that was set up will find uh, on point and that, uh, frankly, they really uh, be supportive of some of the zoning work we're doing together around um, uh, this middle housing. Um, we expect, you know, uh, that uh, it sounds like you. Understanding the conditions of as well. This could be, um, uh, you know, we'll probably have some findings that really show what what kind of financially can be gained from some of like the missing middle rezoning or the south end uh, uh, district zoning. So, you know, we think it's going to have a lot of applications and really you know, direct uh, changes that flow from this. Yeah. Um. I don't know if it's been made yet or specific question. Right? I mean, I, 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 I think you may have said this too, but it's just uh, this, um, sorry, if I missed this, I'd be repetitive, but uh, I think something that, that Urban 3 has added to their work recently, at least I wasn't aware of it until about a year ago when I saw them speak at a conference, is that they uh, really have developed a real focus on how, in some cities, I'm not assuming that we're going to find this to be a case here, although it could be that there has been real racial inequities, uh, racial disparities. Uh, racial inequities that were perpetrated and sort of exacerbated by the taxation system. So um, this is you know, part of the fact that this has become part of their recent work, I think, is uh, makes it, you know, further makes it so important for us to engage in Hard to maybe find that one. We've got 20 black homeowners in the um, And I know I'm one of them, so I think I probably know most of them, but um, I'm happy to move to the Board of Finance. Um, Approved expenditure of eighty-five thousand six hundred nine dollars for the assignment of the Austin Authority Planning to execute the contract of urban three for the revenue and equity analysis. Great, thank you, Councilor Hightower. Second by President Paul. Uh, discussion. Seeing none, we'll go to a vote. All those favor, motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed. The motion carries unanimously. Um, One quick follow-up question, which is, when do you think the work will be? When the when will the report come out? Uh, their original scope was about a seven-month process, um, but there are interim milestones in that, and we have talked internally um, about coordinating with a number of departments who could really benefit from this work to make sure that even some of the interim milestones could be helpful to them. Thank you. Great. Um, this brings us to a final item on the agenda 6.01, which is a communication regarding Memorial Auditorium. Um, we last spoke to the council about Memorial Auditorium sometime in the, in the spring. Um, and uh, we didn't come back, we had a, you know, a, we really made a decision together in that period um, to. Uh, both move forward with the stabilization uh, efforts with the one million dollars uh, that voters did support in the March bond, and um, also to try to find a new way forward, uh, recognizing the uh, financial reality now that we, you know, for many many years to come, we really have very limited um, general obligation funding that we can put uh, into this project. Um, Samantha's been hard at work on that. I think has. Uh, I think we have some, you know, cautious uh, optimism growing that there, that there is a path forward. When I hand it over, Samantha, to take it from there. 
Sure. Yeah. And um, not a lot more that's in the memo, but I can just summarize again. Um, came to the city council in June to kind of give an update. So, on, yes. Sorry, I've seen her before, before Samantha gets rolling here. Really, the point, you know, it's this isn't necessarily something that we would come to speak to the board of finance at, at this point. There's no financial decision that's being requested now. Um, we, um, it, you know, the administration has the ability, what we're proposing is a request for proposal uh, and the administration has the ability to do that without, uh, we don't need council action to do that, but given the, you know, love of Memorial Auditorium, the long history of this project, uh, we thought it was prudent to come and have this discussion with the Board of Finance and, and with the PAC committee to to make, sh to flush out whether uh, there's general support for the direction we're going here and, and not to have more discussion about it, but that, that's the goal for tonight's discussion is to get some sense from you if we're directionally on track with our work. Um, yeah, great. So um, in, I think it was June that um, I gave a brief sort of update to city council on Memorial Auditorium, sort of the existing conditions and the history of what had happened um, with the process previously and, and sort of we were in this uh, sort of do nothing phase that was not uh, serving the building. Um, there was sort of a question of, are we going to stabilize the building now or are we going to knock it down because doing nothing was no longer an option and heard very clearly from the city council that the um, desire was to stabilize the building and find a future for it and, and not not to knock it down. Um, so I've been working with EPRW staff to, to on that stabilization. The first RFP will go out. Um, hopefully next week for get, you know, getting the roof stabilized, which we're trying to do before the snow lands on it and causes it to collapse. Um, we are also working on an alternative heating system. So that stabilization, that's not what this is about. That stabilization, though, is underway and is really important if anything else is going to happen in this building. I think um, what we're here to talk about tonight is next steps. And this was something that I had alluded to in that last presentation to city council, that um, the opportunity for, for keeping Memorial Auditorium, I, we, I think the best next steps is to um, figure out a public-private partnership that would allow um, that building to, to stay as an important part of our historic fabric would bring in private uh, equity to take on the renovations that are required. Um, I, you know, this would still be determined, but imagining something like a 99 year long term lease where the city would retain ownership of the building, meaning that if future generations have the desire and the capacity and capital to take that building back over um, as a city, you know, city owned and operated entity, that would still be an option, but the 99 year lease allows a private entity to access uh, the kinds of funding that they need to. I think a public-private partnership gives us the opportunity, as opposed to just trying to sell the building, to um, weigh in on what the what the uses are, um, potentially bring funds to the redevelopment that a private entity wouldn't be able to access to support some of the um, components that we hope to keep uh, happening in that property. So these public-private partnerships are. Um, have been successful in in Burlington and communities across the country. I, I, I think it's a great opportunity for moving forward. We've got several um, entities that have expressed interest in, in redeveloping the building. So um, it's not just like going out in the dark, like it's not just gonna go in seven days and like hope that somebody responds. Um, it'll, it'll be fully public, but have um, again, several different entities that have ideas for redevelopment of the building. Um, so I'll put together this RFP to um, reach out to understand what's out there and um, potentially select an entity to enter into exclusive negotiations around a public-private partnership. And of course, at that time, we would be coming back to Board of Finance and City Council before engaging in any kind of agreement. But this is really to understand what's out there, um, how, how, what, um, how can it align with some of the goals the city still has for this building and for the community goals for the building and, and does it make sense to move forward? So happy to answer questions. I think the draft RFP um, was attached. Um, we've got, I think, you know, the scoring is really around, you know, how likely something could move forward, but, but mostly around um, what the city's priorities are 
for the building, which is that something happens, that there's long-term um, public benefit, that we have a, a way of preserving the Veterans Memorial with public access, um, that historic fabric, obviously, this is a really important entrance to our, um, to our city, to our downtown, especially with the um, great streets that are gonna be coming up Main Street. Um, so making sure there's activation in this location. Um, and either high quality employment opportunities or um, housing. I think those are both really strong priorities um, for the city. That's right. Um, yeah, I, I don't think the 100 year lease was in any of the materials that you sent. And I guess I just wonder if that's a number that you've already heard, because that's definitely longer than I was thinking. And I assume it's longer than most financiers would even look at in terms of payback period. So curious about. Yeah, it's a, I think the 99 year lease is probably in the RFP and it's a standard um, sort of real estate term used to um, provide entities with um, a long enough lease to be able to access financing that basically says we have ownership of this property for a long time so that they can get bank financing and certain financing that's required for them to have ownership over a period of time. There's lots of things that can be built into that lease, like right of first refusal, or we're checking in after 30 years. And again, that's the kind of thing we would flush out with a specific partner of like, how, you know, how long, when could the first like option for the city come back up to, to reevaluate the lease and things like that. But 99 year lease is kind of a typical term for just to allow those entities to access finance. I have one question. Um, and I'm sitting here, I was sitting here madly looking for it, but I can't seem to find it. So we all know I probably got the, an email from Jim Lockridge. Um, I just keep coming up the same email. I did. Um, and I'm trying to say, can I, I, or whatever, I just cannot find it right now. He specifically had a, a, a request that in the RFP there be, um, again, I don't have it, but I others have, got I, it. I, I can so see maybe you could just yeah. speak to that. Um, he's requesting that the RFP, RFP include we quote reinstate teen led cultural programming to its historic locations among um, among the city's goals and objectives. Yeah. So that's something to consider when I um, reached out to others in the community about that. There was a sense of um, we've identified community space um, and performance space being maintained in the building as one of the priorities, um, but there's a lot of different. Um, folks that would like different kinds of space for rehearsals for performances. And so at this time, um, talking with uh, Burlington City Arts and some others, I, it was recommended that I leave it more broad um, to see, you know, what was available and flush out, you know, if there's community space dedicated in a proposal, what exactly that should be with community input, but happy to, you know, if there's strong support to have specifically that um, team-led space, you know, it's something that could go into our if it's a priority for counselors. Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, I mean, obviously, uh, 242 meetings are there because we were, you know, I mean, this is not a, a matter of finger pointing at all, it's just simply the fact that the building was not stable for, for them to continue. And so they were sort of put in a position where they had to find other accommodations that you know in an ideal world they can put back where they were for no fault of their own they can't be there so it would seem as though we could find a way to incorporate that that would be i think that would be just you know, obviously in an rfp you can't always get everything but i i think if we don't put it in there we wouldn't get it mm -hmm. so, so you recommend having that as one of the city priorities the team led well, I just think that if you, if we if we had somebody who had to leave, that if they want to come back, they left through no fault of their own. But the fact that the city acquired it, that we should be able to come back. That's how I feel. So something about like past tenants. Well, I mean, they I believe they are the only past tenant that would be in that situation. I mean, they uh, the. Um, uh, the pottery and jewelry uh, that was there is now very happily in another location that I think is amazing. And there's 
great room for expansion. Uh, and this is no slight at all on the many others that want to be there. Um, I just feel that, well, I've already, I guess I've already, I don't need to beat it. <laughs> That's how I feel. And maybe I feel differently, but. It's important to have because it's an important resource that hasn't really found a space to flourish in the way other organizations have. And so to the extent that we prioritize um, having that. Um, I don't just think we're no, no, no. Yeah, I, I don't think, think I really need that. Kind of uh, I think yeah. uh, I appreciate the, the detail, so the feedback on this, and we'll, 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 we'll work this feedback in. It would be helpful if you have any uh, kind of directional. Um, you know, certainly, if there's real concerns about, you know, this is a fairly tight timeline from here, or like not tight, but, uh, you know, act. We're moving from this point on. If if uh, this is the way we're going, uh, that our review would be going out this month, or sorry, in November. Uh, sorry, in next October month. next month. We're still in late September. Uh, in November, we be getting responses back, and then we'd be coming back to you in November, December, um, with a path forward. Like Samantha said, there's at least a couple possible responders who we're pretty excited about, um, uh, or at least. Maybe pretty excited to say too much, but we're hopeful of that. And um, so this could be back in front of you relatively soon for uh, action. And if there's uh, some, you know, if there's some kind of disagreement with this, uh, lack of comfort with this um, direction, it'd be good to know that now or soon after tonight so that we can uh, work on that with you and decide whether we need to adjust path. So that's really the purpose. Yeah, I think my only comment to go on my question then is somebody who is. I mean, a hundred years is a very long time. Probably know the building could be like re in great disrepair at that point. So I think just something that um, either has a very public use or where they, the, I don't know what we're calling it, the respondent is open to having a shorter timeline so that if the public does want the building back for who knows what in 70 years, that's a possibility. I think that's a, that would be an important aspect of it. That's real. So that would be, so the, the issue about that was brought up would be part of the 20% the ability to appropriate public uses, identified, um, you know, and there isn't, um, there isn't anything that says this. I mean, it's a typical, you know, the city holds an objection at objectives. I, would hope that one of the objectives, um, well, actually, I mean, I guess it does say that. I'm, I'm probably, again, just sort of reiterating something that is already there, that it just really be a, a real draw to downtown. And this is the gateway building, this is the gateway block. We want it to be the gateway to Burlington and be an exciting place that is exciting for the people that live here, exciting for the people that visit. Um, just a as much of a magnet as we could possibly get. And I personally am not opposed to the timeline. We need to get on with this. It, on the other hand, obviously, if you get one response and that response is not a good one, well, then we read just the timeline. But let's hope for the best. Matt, that's a great point. I think we could um, emphasize that a bit more. That we like, can really make a, a draw to downtown, like, uh, like what is the storm going to do? Awesome. All right. Well, um, I think uh, we're we need to shift meetings in a moment here. I, I do. It's definitely one of those things that, like, if you have new thoughts about this after night, there's still some time. But some back. Smith is going to the pack uh, yep. next week. Yes, twenty-seven. So, so you know, it certainly won't be too late if. Uh, Board members have some new thoughts and want to get them to us in the next couple weeks. So with that, um, thank you. Thanks for we got through a lot tonight. Um, uh, and there's no objection. I am going to adjourn the Board of Finance at 6.27 p.m.